1988, Carbon Dating stated that the Shroud of Turin was from the 14th century. This caused many people to dismiss the Shroud, but was the analysis done properly? In 2005, a member of the original Shroud research team answered this in a peer-reviewed scientific journal. Here's what he said. I had given up on the Shroud, and this was about the same time that the lunatic fringe were coming up with an infinite number of ways the date could be wrong. And this was just the last straw. I got a call from Ray, and he goes, this is nonsense. I can prove these people wrong in five minutes. And I said, well, Ray, go for it. So I read their paper, and I thought, I've got the samples that can shoot that full of holes. So I got out the Ross samples, and I got out the, uh, the Shroud samples, and I went to work again. He discovered that the wrong samples were selected for the dating. He concluded, the radiocarbon sample was thus not part of the original cloth and was invalid for determining the age of the shroud. He also calculated a new date between 1300 and 3000 years old. Again, this is from a well-rated published peer-reviewed journal. What he believes happened is this. If you happen to hit a place where a yarn segment from the original shroud was spliced into the new uh, reweave part, the splice, very definitely shows the new yarn that was being put in and dyed to match. The only thing in the shroud that was dyed or stained was this uh, radiocarbon area. His findings were confirmed by John Brown from Georgia Tech and Bob Villarreal from Los Alamos National Laboratory. I've received many comments that say that Wikipedia disagrees with the findings of Ray Rogers, so we should ignore it. However, I would recommend looking into the sources, as they even mention that the date may be incorrect. With all this said, I prefer to believe the man who obtained actual samples from the Shroud and published his findings in a peer-reviewed journal, and here are some more detail from Ray Rogers. Until I could get a sample from the real radiocarbon cloth, a documented sample, you know, I couldn't prove anything. The authentic radiocarbon sample that I got, these segments of yarn were cut from the middle of the radiocarbon sample, so there was no question about them. And when I looked at these samples from the radiocarbon area, there's no problem at all finding cotton in them. You've got photomicrographs that demonstrate this very clearly. The cotton fibers from the radiocarbon sample are fairly heavily coated with the gum dye mordant. And when we went back and looked at the ultraviolet photographs, here is this area that's significantly darker. It doesn't fluoresce as much. And it's just this area that, uh, around the Ross sample and where the radiocarbon sample was cut. And if they had looked at any of the photographs that we had and studied the information we had as of 1978, they would have known that that was the worst possible place they could have taken a sample. The people who certified the sample are still trying to convince everybody that everybody else is wrong. They're right. Those were perfectly valid samples. There have also been statistical challenges written about in regards to the shroud testing. In October 2019, an analysis of the raw data showed inconsistencies and requested a new carbon-14 date. While these are promising results, a new sample and carbon dating will be needed. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it and share it. Have a blessed day and God love you.